Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and today we are going to stitch out this wonderful pumpkin zipper bag. So the first step, number one, is to stitch the outline and the placement for the zipper. Now the one you guys will get in the files is a little bit different. I took the pumpkin stem off because it was just a little too fiddly for me so I just took it out. It's kind of cute but I think it would have to be stitched separately and put on so I mean I tried right? I tried. Um, there's a couple of small changes as well. This is my tester one that I videoed and you know most of it turns out uh, perfect. I am using batting on this one and you can Skip the batting if you want. Mine is the crappy crap crap. Not the super crappy, but just the mildly crappy one. And it's pretty thick, and I didn't really like it. So, placement. Now, check out the video for super placement, uh, zipper placement, to get it exactly right. And take your time, put it on your desk, and you want to line it up right on the lines and tape it down. You want to get it as straight as you can and make sure the zipper uh, pull which is over on the left. I always do it the same way so I don't lose anything but make sure it's well out of the way of the embroidery foot. So I just double check everything. If you want to tape it in the middle you can. I like to try to make it as tight as I can. I put another piece of tape on it and once you get it exactly where you want, uh, you'd stitch it down. And that's going to hold it permanently in place. So if you did a good job and you made it straight, this will work perfectly. So it's going to stitch one side and then it's going to stitch the other. Now if you see the edge of the zipper is kind of wavy, don't worry about that. What matters is closest to the zipper. So if that's nice and straight and flat, you've done a good job. So here I'm going to add the batting. It's the next step. And I added it like this because I wanted to make the batting a little bit smaller to uh, keep it out of the seam allowance. So it's just batting. You can see how thick it is. It's not really bag making batting, but just stitch it down and do it on both sides. And this is where, again, I encountered the problem with the stem area. It's just too thick. So stitch it down the top and do the same thing with the bottom and then trim it out and it's going to look fantastic. So make sure you have your batting up enough in the right position. I'm a little off right there and so I stop the machine and backtrack a little bit and move the batting up because you do want it to catch. You don't want a whole bunch of it in your seam allowance or close to your zipper because we don't want our zipper to get uh, blocked up by it. But if you're using warm and natural or any kind of a thinner batting, that would work out perfectly. So I just realigned it. I didn't have it quite right. Just a matter of backing up and then stitching it out again. Uh, by the way, I should have said right at the beginning, I am using an 8x8 hoop. You can see the googly eyes. And um, no show mesh cutaway backing. If you don't have that, you can use any kind of cutaway that you have. But I would recommend cutaway. So, all right, I trimmed it out and now I've laid down my fabric and 
I pre-did my fabric with a little fold there and I ironed everything down really well and I placed it very carefully with the fold side at the zipper and taped everything down. You want it to be, you know, the top fold part in the middle of the zipper and the bottom fold part also in the middle of the zipper and they should be quite close. And if you get it close enough, you will end up with a perfect zipper. So they should be touching and they should be placed right in the middle of the zipper. So the, the actual zipper part. You can put it around the outside too, but it won't be quite as nice. And this is how you get a very professional look for your zipper bag. You'll be surprised how pretty it is. Uh, and it's only just a little bit of ironing there. Now, I should have left a little more fabric at the bottom there, uh, but it's okay. It did work out. And you could see how thick my batting is. You can actually see it because there's quite a bit of loft there, which is nice. It's going to look great because we're going to stitch out the design part. So this is the front of the bag and this is where all the designs are. So I'm going to stitch uh, the pumpkin, you know, carving the shape of it. And that's going to look really nice with the thick batting. It just makes the whole thing thick overall. It's slightly annoying, but that's okay. So make sure you have enough of a seam allowance. I'm kind of risking a breakthrough when I'm putting everything together. So go over our rules. The front of the hoop, the, the regular way you put the hoop in, that is for the front of the bag and the back of the bag. And the back of the hoop underneath, when you take your hoop off and turn it over, that's going to be for the lining. So you shouldn't, if you think of it that way, you shouldn't get mixed up as to what goes where. And always remember too, for these bags, it's right sides together. So you won't have to second guess yourself uh, which way does this go? What is this? Now, I am using the same fabric for the lining as I am on the outside. It was just a little bit easier to cut it out that way. But that's how you can remember what goes where. Right sides together. So when you're placing the back of the bag, you're going to place it face down on top. So the right side of the decorated part that we're doing right now and the right side of the back, the back fabric is, are going to be together. So right sides together and top of the hoop is for the bag and then the bottom of the hoop is for the lining so it's if you think of it that way write it down on a sticky note and put it right on your machine you'll be able to keep it straight and it'll make it easier so what just stitched right there is just some decorative decorative stitches to make the zipper area look a little better and it's going to do it on the bottom and then do it on the top now if anyone's wondering why i didn't connect the top and the bottom like the same stitches these are the uh, decorative stitches on the pumpkin uh, because you can't cross the zipper. If you cross the zipper, you won't be able to unzip it. I had a couple of people ask me that, that there's a lot more trims than I normally do. Normally I do everything fairly efficiency, efficiently, but when you're making a zipper bag, uh, there's no choice. Now, if you wanted to leave this just the way it is without doing the jack-o'-lantern part, I think it would look really cute just like this and with the batting and um, just the decorative stitches, but I'm going to go ahead and stitch a jack-o'-lantern face. It's kind of a scary face, but it's also kind of awesome. So the idea of the highlights here, you could do it in darker orange, you could do it in yellow, you could do it in just about any color that you want. It'll give it a different, a different look. And the rest of it is in black. 
which looks really cool. Now, if you are stitching the larger pumpkin, the stitching for the eyes and the nose are just fill stitching, but the mouth is going to be applique. So you could get some groovy fabric in there and make it quite nice. But for the smaller one, I didn't want to do a small applique, so we're just going to stitch it. But you can bling up your guy a little bit. You could use some metallic thread here and there. Either way, it's going to look awesome and like i said you could simply just leave it with the decorative stitches skip the you know the eyes nose and the mouth on the machine and uh, just keep going it's really easy and kind of fun doing it that way so you could have a pumpkin bag and then you can have a jack-o-lantern more for halloween bag which you know why not two two designs in one pretty good so moving right along we're gonna stitch out the black part and again it's just fill stitching we don't need to spend a whole lot of time watching it because it just stitches out in one piece for the nose and the inside of the eyes and then the mouth and it just takes a few minutes because it's not huge it doesn't take a ton of time I'm going to speed it up a little bit so we can watch it because I do like watching my Luminaire 2 stitch at mega editing speed. It's kind of fun. So there we go. It is clearly going way faster than the machine can go. Um, and it's a bit wobbly, but it's kind of cool too. Uh, it's better than, you know, watching the sat satin stitches. So you can see the jack-o'-lantern face just kind of shining through. I like it. It's really cute. It's going to go ahead and do the eyes as well, and then the nose, and then the next step is going to be an outline. So just to make everything stand out. Now for the outline, I am using black, but if you added, depending on your fabric, if you added like a glowy kind of green or something like that, or even glow in the dark to outline it, I think that would be a really, really good effect. So we finished all the stitching and now we're doing that outline that I was talking about. And it's just a quick outline just to give it more definition. But again, green or how about metallic purple for the outline? Mm, I think that would make a big difference and I think it would look fantastic. So don't be afraid to experiment with different colors and different ideas. I really love the fabric that I picked. Um, I think it's the perfect, perfect, perfect one. So once that's all done, we are going to move to the back of the hoop. Now, what I'm showing you here is the pre-done fabric that we've folded and we've placed on the back of the hoop and pretty side facing you and that is going around the zipper so you place it exactly the same as we did at the beginning it's just on the back of your hoop so uh, the folds towards the zipper again and um, touching in the middle and tape everything down securely because it is on the other side of the hoop. Now this is following along almost exactly the same lines um, as the top, so everything should be squared away. And once you get done, you can breathe a little bit because your back should be down perfectly. Now for the important bits. Before you do anything more, we need to unzip the zipper and make sure that zipper pull is out of the way of the stitching. So be very careful of that. You want it open as far as you can, but you got to make sure that your embroidery foot isn't going to hit it. So it's hard to see the lines on this one, but you know, just make sure you're careful. Now these are the tabs and the tabs go over the line, the stitching line that we looked at, 
and I'm making sure they're even by using the zipper as a measuring point. You can grab a little flexible ruler and measure everything. You can measure in from the edges to make sure it's straight, but it's just fabric and it's two by three fabric and you fold it in half and then you fold the edges in and fold it on the half folding line and you can stitch it or you can glue it you can do anything like that but try to make sure they're even so even with the zipper i kind of looked at that it's a little bit off it needs to be moved over a little bit you get a good eye for it and if you're uncertain for sure grab a little ruler that'll fit in your hoop and make sure it's taped down so folded edge towards the zipper again that seems to be a standard rule for it um 100 make sure your zipper's open now this is my fabric that is the back of the bag so that goes face down and then for the back of the bag, I am gonna add some batting. So I did cut the batting the same size as the fabric. If you wanna skip the batting, that's fine. If you skipped it on the front, that's fine. The bag will still be nice and a little more flexible. So then I'm gonna stitch this right down so you have the front of your bag and then you have your zipper pulled uh, as far as you can without getting it caught in the foot make sure that you don't I put the strap tabs on and then I put the back of the bag face down so we have right sides together and then a piece of batting on the front now we only have one step left and it's the other part lining two, I tend to call it. So you need to take your hoop off of the machine and you need to place your fabric underneath. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric right sides together. So you can see here, this is the one lining and this is two lining. So it is right sides together and I like to make the back fabric, so the back of the bag and the back, the second piece of the lining, a little bit bigger. So when I am taping underneath the hoop, that I'm taping it on the hoop because you don't want to push down on your cutaway fabric because. Uh, or sorry, the cutaway backing because you don't want it to move and you have to be a little bit careful of this. So if you look what I'm doing here, I'm taping it on the back of the hoop so then you can push right down on it and it just makes it so much easier to do. And we're gonna put it carefully, carefully, so back on the hoop, lay every, or back on the machine, lay everything down and now we are going to stitch that down. So this is going to stitch it down. So this is the back, the second lining, the back of the lining, and it's gonna leave us an opening. And this is where we're gonna do turn number one. Turn number one. Uh, you have to turn this bag twice, but it's easy once you see how to do it. It's not that bad at all. So the first um, turn is going to be turning it from basically what we see now and turning it so you see both sides of the lining. And then we're going to have to close the lining and open up the zipper and then turn it and then your bag's done. A little bit of ironing um, and if you used crappy crap crap batting like I did, then you're going to have to argue with it quite a bit. The first one has the batting out of the seam allowance, the front of the bag. The back of the bag does not. However, we are stitching it down very nicely with a very strong back stitch. So that's going to hold the bag together just wonderfully. I love doing it that way, either on the 
back part or the lining number two part it makes it a whole lot easier so we're just about done stitching that out um, this bag is super cute and I know this looks like an absolute mess there's fabric everywhere there's tape everywhere but you don't have to worry it really does come together nicely so we're almost done get stitching there luminaire uh, Captain Jack there we go nice little tie off stitches and it's gonna go back to the center and we're gonna hear the happy music which is always a good thing and I, I pick out some of the tape you don't have to worry about it too much because we are going to trim the whole thing and most of the tape will come off so make sure you know where your opening is and then grab your super sharp scissors and you want to trim it carefully you quarter of an inch to, to half an inch something like that you do not want to get too close to the line but you also don't want to leave too much of the fabric now again with the stem I do cut it out here and because uh, it was set up that way it will not be in your uh, design because it didn't really work I'm gonna get into more complicated designs after once everyone gets the basics down then I will you know do multiple hoopings and do little extra things on it and I think that'll be okay but for now you'll just be cutting straight across and make sure your scissors are nice and sharp because right here I am cutting through the strap tabs and uh, you just kind of want to make it even now once you finish cutting you may want to uh, snip the curves so just cut into the fabric up to the line don't cut the line off oh yeah make sure you leave a little tab uh, for the closing so this is where my opening is so I'm just gonna leave a little bit extra fabric here now I, I'm gonna open it up a little bit more because for some reason I felt it would be too difficult uh, you won't have to do that I, I don't know why I thought it would be too hard to turn it probably because of my crappy crap crappity crap batting that's so thick it makes it difficult so don't worry about it you can turn it you just have to be a little patient so there's the turning tab that I left and it doesn't have to be anything in particular just a little bit extra fabric it really does make closing the gap a whole lot easier so you want to try to remember that so that's what it should look like you can see I have the tab kind of open and oh again yes I felt because of my very thick fabric so I take my really sharp scissors and fiddle around with it I probably should have tried it first but you know you never know and if you're using just regular fabric and no batting you will not have a, a hard time turning it it just makes it a little bit easier if you have more of an opening and again my stuff is so thick so then you want to open it using that opening and you'll end up with the good sides of the lining so it is a little bit fiddly to do this but just take your time and be a little bit patient and just pull it all through if you have a Pokemon thing like that like what I have I don't know what is actually called you just have to be careful you don't want to push through the seams and if you push too hard then you can I usually try to push and then pull some but see I am having a hard time because of the thick batting so I, I need to go and send on to get some thinner batting we're working on it eventually we're working on it so there we go pushing it all through starting to look okay kind of less messy uh, I do have fabric scraps all over the place some of them I'm gonna keep and the rest of them are gonna go out so yeah feel free put your hand in there some people use chopsticks 
some people use scissors very carefully to push it out. Um, I really like my Pokemon thing. It's very nice. It's very, very nice. And I like how it works. So it's super easy. So now that we're getting it all turned and you know, we want to flatten it down. I found a rogue piece of tape there. So if you see it, then pick it off. Uh, it won't necessarily show, but it kind of will. It's the lining that you're working with right now. So we need to grab our stitch picker, I call it. That's not what it's called. Seam ripper. <laughs> and this is extremely important. We need to take the seam ripper and we need to cut the uh, cutaway stabilizer. Don't know why I had a hard time saying that. And be very careful doing this because you do not want to cut the zipper. And I usually take my time and get out as much of the stabilizer as I can. Sometimes it works really well with the stitch ripper that I can do one side and do the other. Sometimes I have to get the sharp itty bitty scissors out and do it, but you just want to make sure that your zipper can open and close freely. And I find 99% of the time, if I'm having zipper problems, that's what it's from. So really take your time. It actually looks a whole lot better um, without the stabilizer in it too. And it frees up the zipper. So I'm managing to get some and I, I actually spend a little bit of time doing this because I think it's really important that you took all this time to make the bag and do the zipper perfectly that we want it to look perfectly perfect. So then the next thing we have to do is we have to close the opening and we're going to fold everything towards the inside and then we are going to close it up. So there's my opening there. Fold everything towards the inside and just like that, there we go. I put that weird sticky tape on it, which the stuff is really cool, but it's hard to work with. It makes it fast if you don't get your fingers stuck in it too much and press it down. You could use fusible. You could throw it on your sewing machine. There's so many different ways. I'm just using up this tape and getting used to it. And then turn it through the zipper and carefully, again, push everything out and flatten it out, give it a little iron, zip up your bag, make sure all your corners are out and looking great, or the curves, make sure the curves are really nice. But you can see it is super cute. However, it's a little bit thick for my liking, but everything's finished on it and it's so cute. It's so cute. So have fun making your purses. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.